Welcome to Growing Home Acres. Um, I got a lot going on today, Sarah and I. I'm making bread. We're having BLTs for dinner. So um, since I make my own bread, I like to use my buttermilk that's left over from when I make butter. So I'm going to first do a video um, showing you how I make butter. Um, I do have some buttermilk left over. This is from August 11th. So it's the last week's milk. We get milk once a week from a local farm. Sometimes it gets a little, I would say yeasty smelling, um, and I still use it. It tastes fine. You don't even notice it in the bread. Um, it, it doesn't, when you get fresh cow's milk, um, like I have here, it does not go bad and sour like the milk in the store. Um, it does sour, but the souring is called clabbering. It, it changes form, and you can make sour cream out of it and various things. Um, it doesn't go bad and become disgusting like the milk that you buy in the store. But anyways, um, so this may or may not be enough. Actually, I have my measuring cup here. Um, I'll pour it in here and find out it has to warm anyways. Ah, it's just a little shy, so I will need the buttermilk from today. Um, this buttermilk is not exactly the same as what you get in the store. I know they add cultures and stuff to the stuff you get in the store. I'm not, honestly, not sure technically what the difference is, um, but I consider this buttermilk, and I use this for my bread recipe. Um, and I will show you that in another video. So this video, I'm doing butter. So we get three gallons of milk. Um, this is a half gallon here. Um, we get three gallons of milk from a local farmer. And as you can see this line here, this is the cream. Um, sometimes the line's down here. Sometimes it's up here. It depends on the time of year, the season. Um, how far along they are with their calf and various things. Um, and what we do, I make, um, use two gallons for cheddar cheese um, that I've been making for a few months now. I think I started in May. And then we save a gallon for drinking and for butter. Um, we used to, before I started making the cheese, um, we used to drink all the milk. Um, of which sometimes we would just shake this, the cream right up into the, into the milk and drink it that way. And that is really high fat milk, but it is yummy. Um, but anyways, now I will skim this off the top. I have most of my stuff ready here, except for my little later, ladle. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've already done it with this jar. Um, so that was the other half gallon, um, but you can see, can you see when I dip that in there how thick that is? It's so awesome and it tastes so good. So anyways, I just kind of swirl my small ladle around in there and I'm going to put it right in my, um, this is an old food processor. It's called Le Chef. It's made by Sunbeam. It is old, but it works. And I used the blade. Oops, I don't know if you can see. I just used the blade that's in there. Now we also have a plastic blade. I've never tried that. Um, but we just use this blade. And like I said, I've never tried the plastic blade. But anyways, okay. So now I'm going to swirl this around, get the cream off the top. If I get down into the milk, it's not a huge deal. I don't want to waste the milk, but I also don't want to leave a lot of cream in here because I want to turn that cream into butter and then ultimately use um, the buttermilk or, oops, see, I just spilled some. Um, or you can call it butter whey is another term for it. 
but ultimately I want to use that buttermilk in my bread. So as you can see, as I'm scraping it, that dark line is getting smaller. And this does not take long at all. Um, you can make butter in a food processor, you can use a KitchenAid, you can use an old-fashioned butter churn, um, you can shake it in a jar. I have never shaken it in a jar. I have used the KitchenAid. Um, I would like to try an old-fashioned butter churn, um, but they're very expensive, and a lot of times they don't have all the parts. Um, I almost bought there was one I found that was really cool, but you have to have your own cow and be making gallons of butter. So I'm gonna leave the rest of that. There's, maybe I'll take a little bit more. You can tell when you get to the milk um, because it's it looks like kind of watery running through it. Um, I don't think I can really show that to you but if you do this yourself, you can tell when you get down to the milk, you're starting to get that watery stuff, which is actually whole milk. This down here is all whole milk. Everything below the line of the cream is what they would consider whole milk in the store. All right, so I will just put this in the sink. wipe my jar off here. Hang on a second. I'm going off camera. I'm going to get paper towel. Stamping it a little bit. I was kind of messy here, which I don't like to be because I don't like to waste any of this. But I really seem to have wasted a lot here. So. Now we provide our own jars and we have 12 jars that we rotate. So we leave six jars there at the farm and she fills those on our day, which is Tuesday. And then um, we leave another six jars there. My husband goes and picks it up. Leave another six jars there for the next week. So put that in there. I can do about a quart's worth, a little less than a quart's worth um, in my mixer. I don't want to fill up past here, of course, um, because when it whirls, it's going to overflow. I'm going to get myself a spatula. So we'll pour this cream in there. and get as much out of the jar as I can. So we actually do have our own heifer. Um, maybe I said this already, I don't know, because I started the video before and then my husband interrupted me. Um, but she's not, she hasn't had a calf yet or anything like that, so she doesn't have milk. Okay, with this food processor, you have to actually turn it to the front first, and then you can put the lid on. Okay, as you can see, um, I have my cream in here, and I'm going to turn it on. It's only going to take a few minutes. Um, and you'll see it change. Let me see if I can turn it. But like I said, it only takes a minute or two um, for this to happen. So bear with me. I'm going to let it film the entire time. And you will hear a change in here. You will hear the, the uh, butter whey or buttermilk separate from the butter fat. So I'm going to lock it in place. And here we go. So the first thing it'll do 
is it'll turn it into like a really thick, almost whipped creamy, but really high fat um, substance. Um, let me see if I can stop it and you can see it. See how thick it is? You can see. You want to go past that stage. Um, like I said, you can hear it. We haven't heard it change yet. So keep going. I have had it at times where it takes longer. Um, one of the things is that seems to matter is the temperature and you can see now how it's it's really getting whipped um, is the temperature in your house um, and the temperature of the of the cream that you're whipping um, I have cultured my cream which for me basically means you leave it out on the counter for a day um, and it gets cultured, so there's good bacteria in there, and that will start working um, on your butter. If you leave it too long, it'll sour it. Did you hear the change? You can actually see, there it goes. And you can see the difference in the color here, I think. It's yellower down here, and it's white up here. So I let it go a little bit longer just to make sure that it's all the butter fat is coagulating together. And then stop it. And since I don't have any more to do, I will put that in my sink and my camera and look at that that beautiful butter that's in there okay now we're not completely done yet so we're going to take that and I actually bought myself an old wooden bowl which um, in the back in the day um, they would use for butter, making bread, whatever. This is the bowl they would use. Usually it was a bowl that uh, maybe their husband carved um, or somebody they know carved. Um, and I bought this off of eBay. I actually got it from a lady who, I think they uh, took over a family farm and she was finding all of this cool stuff. Um, and I bought this from her. Um, and I use this. Um, when I'm making my butter. I have used it for making my bread also. I'm not going to today, um, but I have used this. Um, also, they used to, they have butter presses, antique butter presses. This is only part of a press. It didn't come with the press part, but I thought it was so cute. I don't know if you can see it on there. It's a daisy, or I'm sorry, it's a sunflower. I thought it was so cute that I didn't care that it didn't come with a press. I haven't used it yet because um, I haven't decided in my mind how I'm going to do it and be able to get it off of the butter um, or I'm going to look for a press that will fit this. Um, the other thing that they used to use um, in the next process is paddles. Um, I happened to get, I think I got them all together, um, but and I have used the paddles. Honestly, I prefer the more modern spatula. I like these spatulas, the one piece that don't come apart um, and you can't get butter up inside of them. So I will be using that. But these work. Um, but I have, you know, I'm getting old. Uh, I have a problem with my hand. I like this because it's flexible. So anyways, I'll leave that over here. So right now we're going to put this aside. We're not ready for this yet. Um, we're going to drain the butter fat out of 
um, the butter from the butter fat, or the, I'm sorry, the butter fat from the buttermilk. Um, so what I do is I have a, this is my large um, strainer. I have a set with three different sizes. I prefer to use this one um, because if the butter falls in there when I'm doing this, it's large enough, it generally catches it. It doesn't fall on the counter or anything. And then I use my larger, um, I have a porcelain bowl, but I like it because it's got a spout on it because then when I get my, have my buttermilk left over, I can just pour it in a jar. So I will take this and pour the buttermilk, hold onto this or it'll fall out, hold onto the blade, and then you can see the butter starts falling out. So try and control the butter falling out so it doesn't end up on my counter or in the bowl. set that on the counter. Oh, I left my spatula over there, so hang on one minute. We'll grab that. And get all the butter off the blade. Now, in the case where I didn't make cheese um, and I have more butter to make, of course, I would not. Um, I would just save this, put it back in here and make my next batch of butter, but this is all the cream I have, so I don't need to do that today. So then I'm scraping the butter out of here and putting it in my strainer. And try and get as much out as I can, because this is uh, like gold to me and to my family. We love this. Now I used to salt my butter and um, we would do that at a later stage but Sarah is a baker and likes to control her salt better than that so we stopped salting it. Um, and we've gotten used to it not being salted. In the case where we want salt like sometimes we'll put it on a piece of bread which is We'll just salt the butter on the bread. I don't always do that, but occasionally it's like, oh, this needs some salt. So, okay. So we got it all out. I do have a dishwasher. Um, I hate it. My husband calls it the dish wetter. And I'm just the type of person that I do my dishes as I'm cooking and making things. I'm not doing it now because of the video, but normally I would be have these all washed. Um, but anyway, so I have made butter many, many times, and I've done it many, many different ways. And I have found that if you put it in the strainer, at this point, you could just leave it sit for a while and let it drain. Um, if I had something else to do, but because I'm doing the video, I'm not going to do that. So I will push it just a little bit you don't want to push too much or you'll be pushing butter through your strainer um, and you still are pushing a little bit of butter through your strainer but you can see the the butter milk coming out of it so I just push it a little bit and try and get some of that butter milk out so that I can save it um, the, net, the step after this is to wash the butter. I've actually seen videos where they save that water right in with the buttermilk. I do not do that. Um, if there's a little bit of water, I might. I'm not opposed to that, but it's just not my practice on what I do. But I do try and get as much of the buttermilk out while it's in the strainer. And uh, like I said, I... I would probably just leave it sit and every once in a while just come and flip it around, let it drain a little more. Because you can see how much is still coming out of here. Um, and you can probably see, see the butter getting squished through here. I don't have any down in the bowl here, I don't know if you can see that. It's all buttermilk. On occasion. 
I've squished it too much. And ended up with little bits of butter in there. And that's okay too. You know, you can try and pick them out, but if they're really small, um, you might just leave them in there. Not a big deal. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my hands here. get rid of my the food processor this food processor is awesome like I said it's a Sunbeam Le Chef um, some of the parts on it are getting cracked I'm afraid when it breaks down um, that I won't be able to get parts for it it's actually my daughter's my daughter took it uh, when my father died I think it was my stepmothers um, but it, it has really come in handy and um, I'll be sad if I can't get parts for it okay so anyways um, now I've decided that this is enough um, draining and I'm gonna put it in my I'll move this aside for now So I'm going to plop this in my bowl, in my wooden bowl here. You don't have to have a wooden bowl to do this. I just thought it was cool. You can do it in a regular bowl. And then I scrape as much butter off of here as I can. Because you don't want to lose that butter gold. And then I'll... You don't even have to put it in a strainer if you don't want. I'm just showing you the way I do it. And and uh, I, um, I didn't always do it this way. I didn't always put it in a strainer. Um, some people put it in a cheesecloth. Um, you could put it in a cheesecloth and just let it drain. Um, some people just, you know, pack all the butter together and pull it out and don't even drain it. And then they start washing it. So, let me just finish getting. See, there's quite a bit left in there. I could do this for a while probably and still get more, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. So, the problem with leaving all my dishes in the sink here is I have to wash this butter. show you something else. I just bought this. They actually bought it at Silver Dollar City because they have a lot of craftsmen there. And it's dirty because I just emptied the butter out of it. But this is a French butter keeper. So it looks like it's upside down, but it's not. So you pack the butter in there and then you put about an inch of cold water in there or room temperature water in there um, and it seals the butter in there now when your butter gets low in here it has a tendency of butter clumps to end up in the water which is fine you just pick them up and you you change the water every couple of days you know every three days or something like that just to keep it fresh but it keeps your butter fresh it's great um, it, it works really well I wasn't sure about it um, even though I bought it, but I wanted to try it. I like to try new things. So anyways, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my butter. Um, in the past, I have taken mason jars, put them in the freezer, got the water really cold. I still do that if it's really hot in my house. Um, but lately, even though it's summertime, it's kind of hot outside. Um, we have well water, it's pretty cold, so I just wash it with the water straight out of our well. Okay, so we're going to wash the butter. So all I'm going to do, I don't want my water to be full force because it'll make a hole in the butter, especially if your butter's a little on the soft side. Mine's not too soft right now. Um, 
but if I didn't have the air conditioning on, it's hot out, it would be. So all, oops, and then I turned it on a little more. All I'm gonna do is put water in there. Can you see how milky? I'm sorry, I have not figured out the, the stand. Here we go. See how milky that is? What we want is that milkiness of that water to go away. So we want it to be as clear as possible. So some people seem to be able to get it to be clear um, by just washing it a few times. I don't know how they do that because I have not been able to do it. This is probably the longest part. So all I do All I do is I put the water in there and then I just keep folding the butter like that in the water which is a little hard for me to show you with and you can see how quickly it got milky again so then I dump it out and run some more water on it if the water when I run the water on it if it's pretty milky I just dump it out right away and then put more so all I'm doing is folding it in the water. I probably put a little more water in there than I needed to right now, but that's okay. As long as you're not overzealous, you won't get it on the floor. And you just keep and see how the water is turning milky. And you just keep folding it and folding it. So I did pause the camera so you didn't have to see me um, doing each time because it's the same thing over and over again. Um, I'm on like my eighth time since I paused the camera. So I would say it takes eight to ten times for me to wash. Um, now I used to be um, really particular and tried to get every single bit out. But we keep our butter in the freezer um, the problem with not getting all the buttermilk out is it will sour quicker. Um, so if you're going to leave it on the counter, you want to get out as much as you can, which, I mean, with the French uh, butter keeper. Maybe I'll do one more time after this because I see it's still a little milky there. Um, but honestly, you could do this all day long and you'll still get a little bit of cloudiness in there. So, like I said, I am not as particular as I used to be um, because I feel my time is better spent doing other things and I have a lot to do today. Um, but I'll do one more time. Okay, I have to go out and help my husband because we bought some new chicken coops because we have two sets of um, chickens. We have some meat birds that we got that we thought were all males, that the lady that gave them to us thought were all males. And they're not, there's some hens, and there's a lot more roosters than there are hens, so they're really going after those hens, so we need to separate them, because you should only have one rooster for like every 12, or maybe even more, 12 to 20, I think. Um, you probably could get away with two roosters for 20 hens, but um, anyways, they will really beat up on your hens. So um, we bought, A new chicken coop very inexpensive um, just so we could quickly move them and I have to help my husband with that so anyways this is what the butter looks like now I have butcher paper or freezer paper um, this stuff that I use I pull out a big sheet cut it in half this is an old package of butter um, that I just pulled out of the freezer because we usually rotate. I'll put this in the freezer. I suppose we could use this because um, I just used up all the butter that was uh, soft. But 
I pulled this out because I'm going to make bread and I'm going to need the butter right away. Um, and I will put this one in the freezer. So I'll just put that in butcher paper. I'll say unsalted butter on it and put the date. And that's it. That's all it is to making butter. Um, thank you for watching Growing Home Acres. So thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe, like, share, tell all your friends about us. Um, help us become a big YouTube channel. Um, uh, we're inviting you into our life um, so that uh, you can see what it's like to live on a homestead. Um, maybe it's something that you want to do also or you just like watching um, or maybe you just like want to make butter you know um, so anyways thank you for watching us at Growing Home Acres um, and I hope that you're living the life that you want to like we are thank you bye bye